Ah, okay. All right, go ahead, brother. It should be, it's no, 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 it's okay. It can be hard. That's fine. Okay, yeah. Okay, so is there any uh, significance of the honey and the honeycomb in uh, 1 Samuel 14, the one that uh, Jonathan did with Saul? Uh, because I know right, the Bible was like, uh, uh, it's um, called honey in Psalms 119, but it's, what, what is that honey, and is there any significance? Mm -hmm. Okay, then. So, we're going to look at the book of Psalms, chapter 19. Psalms, chapter 19. And then 1 Samuel, what passage was that again, brother? Mm -hmm. uh, Alright, I'll so I'll find that real quickly. But first Sam, but Sam, but first Samuel fourteen is uh, we're going to look at that. The reason why I'm asking is because I want to see the whole context. That way I can truly understand the question where he's getting at, and then we can find the right answer properly. So we're going to look at first Samuel chapter fourteen. And then Psalms 19 as well. There are two passages, Psalms 19 and 1 Samuel chapter 14. We're going to look at verse 43, 43. Then Saul said to Jonathan, tell me what thou hast done. And Jonathan told him and said, I did but taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand, and lo, I must die. We're also going to read verse... 25, and all they of the land came to a wood, and there was honey upon the ground. And when the people were come into the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in an honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Then answered one of the people, and said, Thy father straightly charged the people, with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day, and the people were faint. Then said Jonathan, My father hath troubled the land. See, I pray you, how mine eyes have been enlightened, because I tasted a little of this honey. Okay, this can be a great sermon right here. So let me try to apply as best as I can in a spiritual application. All right, first let's look at throughout the Bible what this would represent. Throughout the Bible, honey was used in a positive connotation. It's used to, in reference to something sweet. And with something sweet, it invigorates you. So it invigorates you. It energizes you. That's what you're going to notice throughout the whole Bible here. The great example is at this passage. You notice that Jonathan, he said that, I pray you how mine eyes have been enlightened because I tasted a little of this honey. So the Bible uses this as a positive connotation as something sweet and energizes you. Now, throughout the context of 1 Samuel 14, what's going on is this, is that Saul, he made a foolish oath. In this foolish oath, Saul said that we're not going to eat until I take vengeance on all my enemies. So they were fasting until they can kill all the enemies. Well, how are you going to get energy to kill all your enemies then if you're all fasting, if you don't eat? So then Jonathan, he said, notice that when I just ate honey, it invigorated me already, and my eyes were enlightened. You know what the Bible likens that to? The Word of God enlightening you. Psalms chapter 19, and we'll read verse 10. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than, notice, honey... And the honeycomb. What is the they? What is the they right here? Look at verse 7. The law of the Lord. Look at verse 8. The statutes of the Lord. The commandment of the Lord. See that? It's referring to his words right here. What he has ordained. What he, statute he's given to you. What law he's given to you. So you'll notice right here that the honey is in reference to something sweet and energized you. And what this reference to many times is referring to the Bible. And the Bible, it gives you that strength where you can attack the enemy. That was Saul's problem. In order to attack the enemy, 
He was starving them out of something that could have energized them and given them strength. Jonathan, because he tasted of that honey, he felt enlightened. And by the way, Jonathan was the one who's famously known in this passage of conquering the enemies right here. So you'll notice right here that the, in order to attack the enemy, it's not by doing a foolish oath where you fast spiritually. Now, if you fast physically, that's one thing, but we're talking about spiritually right here. We're not talking about fasting and praying. We're talking about fasting from the Bible right here. When you're fasting away from the Word of God, which gives you the energy to attack who? This enemy. When you attack this enemy, you need the Word of God. And you need that Word of God to fight and attack the enemy because it's sweet and it energizes you. Now, there are some things also concerning this honey, which is a warning as well. We're going to close with the book of Revelation. Revelation. But there's another passage, but we won't turn there for time's sake. For time's sake, we're not going to turn over there. But uh, we're going to look at the book of Revelation, chapter 10. Chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. You know what the Bible says at the book of Proverbs? The book of Proverbs says that if you eat too much honey, it's not good. Hmm, how about that? Too much sweetness is not good for you. Here's another thing. If everything is sweet and energizing you, that's not a good thing either. The bulk has to give you something bitter as well. Now look at Revelation chapter 10. We're going to read verse 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. See that? And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. So notice right here that it's very interesting in Revelation chapter 10, this can definitely give a great picture of the Bible where it not only gives you the sweetness, but it also makes it bitter. See that? When you come to this church, you're enjoying the honey a lot through Bible study, through sermons, through encouragement. It's sweet, right? Oh, pastor's such a sweet man, you know, during fellowship. Nice guy, you know. What a great sermon. It was so sweet and encouraged me. But then you get the bitter part, uh, 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 like, like this morning, and then you're like, my goodness, I, my stomach hurt. It was so bitter. That's the balance of the Bible. What's it supposed to do? It's supposed to bring bitterness and sweetness. Because you know why? The book of Proverbs says too much sweetness is not good. It makes you vomit. makes you sick. That's why when you listen to Joel Osteen's sermon, it just makes you puke. Uh, what an ending right there. You might say, why is that? He's a sweet guy. That's right. Sweet and nice guys are the ones that Satan wants. Is too much honey. There is no bitterness in there. But also, you can't get rid of the sweetness. If there are preachers who have no sweetness in them that can give you energy. There is no book that, if that Bible had nothing but hell and judgment, where would we get any joy in our lives? We have the sweetness of His presence and His glory, eternity in heaven, eternal security. What a sweet ending right there. And that's what we need to invigorate us. And because we don't have that, we cannot attack the enemy. You know why you get discouraged? You know why the enemy is beating you in your daily life right now and you feel worn out? You have nothing sweet to energize you. All you do is put negative things in your mind. Discouragement, depression, Misery, looking at the trial and persecution. Hey, friend, that's, the book is supposed to give you sweetness and energy. What are you doing with it? It can't just stay on your shelf collecting dust. Mm 